And you brought up another great point about um, hydration or intracellular water. And so they studied this not only in athletes, but they studied this in elderly population. So in an elderly population, they found those with greater intracellular water. So remember the intracellular water, the cells expanded, it's in an anabolic state. They had less frailty and an increase in performance. So studies in elderly population. We also saw studies when it comes to increased intracellular water in uh, athletes, which it's hard to move the needle in an athlete because they're pretty optimized. And they showed that um, over a course of a season, those with higher intracellular water perform better. When they looked at leg extensions, they looked at grip strength, and they found that even in not, not only chronically over the, the season, but they found in the acute setting that those that had less intracellular water had less uh, less performance or less strength um, in a number of different markers. So intracellular water, absolutely, you were mentioning it before, but just to double down on that, there are plenty of studies showing that that increase in intracellular water has everything to do with strength that ties us back into why hydration is so important, not only for the maintenance of muscle mass, but when it comes to how you're performing in the gym and your strength, hydration plays a, a massive role. So you have an interesting way of looking at hydration it's not just salt water. You're not just giving yeah. people electrolytes. So can you talk about that? Yeah. So of course, um, you know, electrolytes are very, very important, but one of the things that, um, we did in some of the masterminds and some of the other physicians that we've been, um, doing a lot of research with is it started back in COVID actually for a number of other reasons, but there, you know, a lot of the physicians were using, um, specific amino acids in their high performing athletes. So we had some physicians that were, um, training high performing athletes. And when they're, they're working out so hard, if you think about CrossFit athletes, or if you think about people that are doing one hour, two hour workouts, one of the main things that you want to do with them is maintain muscle mass and because they're burning so many calories. And one of the, one of the drinks that they were using was getting specific amino acids together, um, that were amino acid osmolites. So we're not talking about branch chain amino acids or essential amino acids. We're talking about specific amino acids that have this, uh, that are neutral osmolites, meaning that they draw water into the cell. So ones like alanine and glycine and glutamine. And so they would mix that mixture with some creatine because creatine is also an amino acid. It's also uh, an osmolite. So it draws water into the cell. And so they were mixing that in their water for the day, two to four liters of water. And this had an amazing ability in professional athletes, not only to, not only to improve their performance um, while they're exercising, but to maintain that muscle mass. And this is something we started to realize once GLP-1s came out. And once we saw people were decreasing in muscle mass, um, but you know, patients weren't compliant with it, they're not going to buy four or five different amino acids and put it in there. So, um, we did, we did help them with formulating something called iCell. That is these amino acid osmolites with creatine. It's a powder. They put it in the water and they drink it slowly throughout the day. So typically, you know, an electrolyte drink or any other type of uh, supplement, you would just put it in eight ounces and, and drink it. That's not how this works at all. You actually have to drink it slowly throughout the day. So one of the recommendations we have for most of our patients, they're drinking at least two liters of water. So they put this amino acids and creatine in the water and they drink it slowly throughout the day. And that way we know they're getting their two liters of water at minimum per day, but we're getting these amino acid osmolites. We're improving intracellular water we're, we have their cell, you know, in an expanded volumized state and it's in a state to, to win. And, um, so anything else we do with that exercise, other peptides, um, it just makes it exponentially, exponentially better. I've been using it and I actually add it. I use, I take my element electrolytes to flavor it and I yeah, add them too. together <laughs> and I, I do the same thing. It's such yeah. a great blend. Like I notice improved cognition for sure, but most notably just a boost in my energy overall sustained daily energy. I really go through these sort of like highs and lows in my energy throughout the day to the point where there's like a scheduled nap in most of my days. I have like a 3 PM Pacific standard time. There's a nap involved and it might just be a short rest, but there's some kind of like, let me lay down and recharge. And I've noticed not needing that. And in fact, feeling like I want to get up and do something like some kind of exercise or movement. And I'm not making this up because you sent me some like a month or so ago and I've been doing it diligently in preparation because I was like, well, let's see if this really works, you know? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. it's, I, I'm impressed. I, I think it's a good product and I think it it's helping and you're right. There is sort of a lack of hydration with the GLP ones. And it's something I double down on inside my program where I tell people like, do not forget to drink water because 
it's crazy how many people come to me. My husband the other day, he's like, I have the worst headache. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was that extra glass of wine last night or, and my husband doesn't get impacted by alcohol. So I was like, no, it's not that. And he couldn't figure it out. And I was like, have you had any water today? And he'd been working. I think he'd worked like an eight hour shift at work and had come home and he had not had any water since waking up that morning. And I was like, Hmm, <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe that that's, helps. And, but and then that's you easy pee. to do. Yeah. But you pee it out if you're not getting these other cofactors in there. So I don't know. Interesting. I, I just think it's a really interesting what you're onto something. And it, yeah, no, I, the people, people, you know, there's a lot of things that we take because we know that they're good. And then there's things that uh, we, we have that people really feel, and you can absolutely feel from one day to the next, like how well you're lifting, how strong you are in the gym. And, and I saw water is definitely by far one of those, one of the best things that we know people are going to feel the difference. And then one of the things that we do, we have a longevity assessment center where we have a DEXA scan machine. We do VO2 max testing. We do strength testing. Uh, one of the things that we're doing with case studies is saying, because it is annoying. I get, I do get frustrated when I see, you know, all these things talking about GLP ones and muscle loss, and you have to be careful. And we have many case studies that you, you might've seen me present on before where we've had people gain muscle mass on GLP ones before while losing fat tissue. And that's, that's hard. That's hard to do. I mean, if even you ask those in the bodybuilding, you know, community, they're either doing one or the other when they're focusing on that, but we have had patients that absolutely will lose fat tissue while gaining muscle mass. Um, not that that's what you need to do, but you need to at least main, maintain muscle mass. And the other thing is, you know, you might have a patient that has a very high BMI, 38, 39, and they're metabolically inflexible and people are upset that they might lose a couple pounds in, in, in lean mass. It's like, well, this, this person's in danger. They're in, a, in an inflammatory state. They're metabolically inflexible. I'm not worried that they're well muscled, which is another thing that you have to look at when you're prescribing GLP ones is you have to identify is the person under muscled or are they have sufficient muscle when you start? Because I'm not worried about that patient that's losing a couple of pounds of muscle mass while we're getting them metabolically flexible again. And by the way, if you test how strong they are, I've had patients that lose a little bit of muscle, but they get stronger in the process. So we already identified that. Is it muscle mass or muscle strength? That's more important. And so if your patient's getting stronger while they're losing, losing weight, even if there's a little muscle mass in there, there's, it's, it's very nuanced. And that's why I hate when the conversation is just like, oh, you're, you're losing muscle mass because there's, there's, there's so much more to this conversation. Tell me more about the patient, where they started. Did they get stronger during the course of therapy? Because that's going to really tell us, you know, if we're doing the right thing or not.